Oh, hey, we're back for part two because our stream spontaneously ended and we don't edit the video. So here we are. It's part two of our daily space weather video featuring space weather and earth weather together. Congratulations on realizing the channel exists. Don't forget to press like, subscribe, share, etc. Here come bonus features. What great timing. Satellite charging hazards are non-existent. The electron flux remains quite low, as seen here by the GOES electron flux for the past three days. And you've also got the forecast model here from NOAA expecting an uptick in the electron flux. I'm expecting a downtick come tomorrow, as there's a coronal mass ejection impact likely starting about midday tomorrow, Wednesday, April 19th. Here is the one-year graph to put the relativistic electrons in context, and we're seeing a lengthy trough here of low electron flux. We'll show the layer of the atmosphere where that's measured, the F layer. It's located about 300 kilometers of altitude. And there you go. There is the vibrational frequency of the F layer. We'll also show the anomaly gram. It shows high frequency anomaly in blue, low frequency anomaly in red. And that is the anomaly in megahertz from the 30 day median. Some significant anomalies happening here around South America, as they typically do, as the South Atlantic anomaly is right here over the South American continent. You can even see the variations there in the ionospheric anomaly. Some pretty wild variations happening there around the South Atlantic anomaly today. That's the previous day. Here's the latest image, 1130 Universal Time Ionogram and 1130 Universal Time Anomalygram. Total electron content shows the free electrons up to your GPS satellite. Feel free to pause the video on this frame if you're not familiar with distances to these things in miles. Here is the total electron content forecast. That'll show you the most likely places to see GPS errors. It's the free electrons from ground level to about 12,500 miles of altitude, which is the coupled thermosphere, ionosphere, plasmasphere, electrodynamics model. And let's continue on to our latest solar intensity gram and colorized magnetogram. Do we have any new sunspots on the east? Not yet. Although that one there is magnetically complex. Here's your full disk rock back. Let's get to meteorology. And we're looking at something very scary. Oh my God, look at these high concentrations of carbon dioxide. Oh no, that is, I am spooked by that. The levels are all the way up at 467 parts per million there. 467 parts per million there. Uh, surface concentration of carbon dioxide. Uh, I imagine it's incredibly hot there. The, the ocean is probably boiling under that area. Pardon my sarcasm. Let's take a look at temperature while we're here. And I can barely even tell a difference. Anyway, here is our global temperature map. And let's switch to wind patterns to get the weather portion of our daily space weather video covered. These are the surface winds of the eastern world. Check out the strong low here off the coast of Kamchatka. Here are the jet streams of the east. Here are the jet streams of the west. Here are the surface winds of the Americas surface winds of Europe, Africa, and the Middle East. And don't forget the jet streams. Next, clouds and fog. That is 3.9 micrometer. Yeah, I've been saying nanometers for years. 
and I thought there was something wrong. It's it's actually micrometers, and I should have realized this since nanometers are so small, much smaller than microwaves. Quick side note here. 3.9 micrometers, part of the infrared spectrum, not nanometers. That would be like x-rays. So anyway, 3.9 micrometers is part of the infrared spectra, shortwave radiation showing clouds and fog. Next, our weather.gov map. If your location's lit, head to weather.gov and click your county or perhaps your waterway. Some flooding and gales around Hawaii forecasted. Hydrologic output as snow melts in the northern U.S. And some additional snow continues to fall. Anyway, here's your temperature anomaly forecast. Cold air coming back to the northwestern and north central U.S. That is temperature anomaly in degrees Celsius based on the GFS 72-hour model. Here is your GFS 72-hour pressure and precipitation forecast. Some more ice coming to Canada and small parts of Minnesota, I believe. Expected to see some significant ice there. Pressure and precipitation 72-hour GFS model. And last but not least, accumulated positive snow depth change in inches based on the 72-hour GFS model. Some additional snow coming to Pennsylvania here. Also New England, and especially the northwestern part of the U.S., as you can see. And just taking a look at the snowpack here for a brief moment. There is the current snow depth map for the U.S. Quite a lot of snow to melt yet. And let's take a look at the current status on globalcryospherewatch.org. So as we see a seventh consecutive record snowfall winter for the northern hemisphere, there is the snow mass balance not including mountains, right in the meaty part of the range there, right in the center of the plus or minus one standard deviation, which is the blue shaded region. Snow extent, which is a two-dimensional snow tracker. In other words, one inch of snow is the same as one foot of snow on snow extent. It's actually at the top of the plus or minus one standard deviation range. And snow water equivalent, well outside of the plus or minus one standard deviation range. So expect extreme meltwaters to continue. If you're downstream from huge amounts of snowpack, be aware of this graph. GlobalCryosphereWatch.org if you want to monitor it yourself. Next, we saw some pretty berserk lightning here around the Caribbean. And let's check and see if we have any current strikes on our real-time lightning map. Powered by Blitzortung.org, lightningmaps.org. And we do have some terrestrial strikes happening here uh, right around Houston, it looks like. Hey, Houston. There's thunder rolling in. And if you're wondering, if I lived in Houston, I would have a bunker. just because of basic crime. Houston, otherwise known as Bogota, Texas. All right, continuing on to our radar map. There is radar.weather.gov. Pretty cold in Lehigh Valley, Pennsylvania this morning. There is the lower 48 view. Possible snow falling on the western part of the state. Here is clouds and fog. 3.9 micrometer radiation. And here's the 6.19 micrometer radiation water vapor map. Here's the recap to close this thing out. U.S. Doppler radar. Three point nine micrometer radiation, which shows clouds and fog when it's dark over more than half the country. And there is water vapor. 
a little bit of an atmospheric creek forming there between Southern California and Alberta, Canada. Anyway, we'll close this thing out right here. Thanks for tuning in. Congratulations on realizing that the Smash News Network Least Busted Name and News exists. Please support the channel via the links below the video, and we'll see you soon. May that solar wind be at your back.